yes, it's time to get started. So, like I said, if you couldn't hear me before, um, and um, I'm not feeling like really froggy, so, so I'm not going to be able to speak much louder than I am right now. Um, you know, move up front if you wish. You don't have to. You can stay in the back. All right, so my name's Ed Wilson, and I'm the scripting guy. I um, write a blog called Hey Scripting Guy. You know, so I imagine that some of you probably read it before. So, um, if you haven't, you know, you should check it out. It's uh, I publish stuff twice a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, sometimes more. So, um, it is absolutely, you know, the the most comprehensive collection of stuff about PowerShell that you're going to find on the internet. Uh, last year, I actually wrote a blog article about this. Uh, last year, I think I published the equivalent of four books, you know, on the blog. So, so everybody talks about like a free ebook. Dude, no, there's four of them, you know, and they're like a thousand pages each. So that's a free encyclopedia. How about that? Um, so um, what I'm going to talk about today, you know, is, you know, if you guys have been doing PowerShell forever, then, you know, this is absolutely positively, I would imagine, not going to be revolutionary to you. Um, this is, but this is absolute, also absolutely positively bread and butter, day in, day out, stuff that a normal IT pro is confronted with on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, and, you know, SQL DBAs. Uh, many years ago, um, I, I, was, uh, I used to travel around the world, you know, every week, teaching VBScript, PowerShell, WMI, you know, stuff like that. Um, and one, I remember I was out, I was out in like California, and um, you know, and I was talking to people before the class, and every single person in the class was a DBA. And I was like, what in the heck? Yeah, and, and it was like an eye opener for me. It's like, what in the heck are all you DBAs doing in this class? And they said, well, you know, we need to do data grooming, data transformation. Yeah, you know, and it's a whole lot easier to use scripting than it is to use the, at least back then, you know, maybe it's a whole lot better and easier and wonderful now, you know, maybe we have like, you know, stuff that just like Intel import that figures crap out automatically. Yeah, um, but, you know, back then, you know, it was a lot easier to use scripting tools than it was to use the stuff that was built into the product um, to clean it up and to groom the stuff. Yeah, and, you know, there's always been the old adage, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking about stuff, you know, from an Active Directory perspective. And, um, yeah, and, and I see Active Directory, you know, it's a database, yeah. But yeah, what I've also seen, yeah, and maybe, maybe this has changed, you know, but, um, but yeah, back when I was like, you know, day in, day out, you know, working with customers on a daily, daily basis, you know, what I was see seeing, you know, is Active Directory was like the Roach Motel. You know, people put data in, but they never, ever, ever pull stuff back out. You know, and, and I have actually seen stuff, you know, where co companies had Active Directory fully implemented, you know, and I'm like talking to my buddy, you know, what are you doing? Well, I'm having to update the phone list for the company. What in the heck are you doing updating the phone list for the company? Well, you know, we have it all on this internal website. Right? <laughs> You know, or, or whatever. Yeah, and this is a manual process. You know, and other people like they print it out like you know once a month and hand it out to people. I mean, I mean, it's like you know, that stuff's an active directory. You know, this shouldn't have to be a manual process. You know, um, and and so forth and so on. You know, um, I I actually you know I seen one time you know where the company was wanting to put together uh, like a softball league. You know, and so they were wanting they. The poor IT guy, okay, you know, you know, send out an email, you know, collect everybody, you know, find out who, you know, plays softball. You know, I mean, you can put a field in Active Directory. I don't know if it's there or not, but you could easily add, extend the schema, put a field in Active Directory, make it an array, favorite sport, or call it sports. You know, and that way you got, you know, softball, basketball, baseball, you know, whatever, you know, whatever these people think of, you know, to waste your time, you know, if you've got the data to support it, it's going to be easy. Okay, so speaking of wasting people's time, um, so right now what I'm going to talk about 
and I hope this isn't going to be a waste of time. But so suppose that you've been given a, you know, some malformed data, I call it. Okay, so, you know, where the data came from, whether it came from, a, you know, you know, from HR, you know, whether it came from an Excel spreadsheet, whether this is something that was exported from Active Directory or whatever, you know, these are the kinds of things that I've seen, you know, and, you know, put into a database before. Yeah, and um, so we got a, n a name field. Ah, oh, that's cool. Wait a second. You know, most people, you know, at least in North America, you know, most people we do like the first name, the middle name, the last name, or middle initial, or something like that. Um, but now this is just name. Okay. Um, I have, in fact, seen many, many, many databases. You know, where the date was day, month, year. Yeah, and the years weren't all just two digits either. I mean, you know, I've, I've seen this in more recent times than, than 1999. Um, and then we have an address field. So obviously what happened here is that whoever did this data layout was a moron. You know, they had no concept or no idea about normalizing data. The only field that's normalized is the date field. <laughs> you know, we really don't need or want that. <laughs> okay, so they don't understand objects either. I, uh, but, you know, we see this, you know, people type stuff up, you know, and whenever you have a manual process, you know, you're going to get stuff that's going to be messed up. Some people don't like capital letters, some people inconsistently capitalize stuff. Um, around here, uh, there's a town that's called Fort Mill, South Carolina. Okay. Now, I don't have this as an example, but guess what? Sometimes people don't like to go to all the trouble of spelling out the word fort in Fort Mill. So they go into input city, you know, and it's FT space M-I-L-L, -L, probably in lowercase and without a period, or with a period and uppercase. Or maybe they actually spell it out fort space mill. Okay, so these are some of the kinds of things that you need to look at. And when you go to do, run a report, unless you know every possible way that a moron could mess up your data, your report is not going to be complete. Now, the whole object of this thing right now, you know, um, and we're not going to go into this. This is an entire whole nother thing. And data validation, validate your data before you let them mess up your database. Yeah, but quite often what happens is the person that set it up, the various people that have been putting stuff into your database have already messed stuff up horribly. And so you're now having to come in and maybe you're going to migrate this data from this old crappy thing into something that's going to be pretty cool and, and nice in the future. And so you're transforming, cleaning up the data. Okay, so we've even got people that have no idea how many digits go into a zip code. Okay, so uh, we've messed up the name, we've messed up the date, we've messed up the address. Okay, so uh, enough said. So now, how do I approach? Uh, how do I approach working with this? Well, you know, the first thing that I do is uh, I like to actually kind of look, take a look at the data, see what we've got. So I just did that, and I realized, okay, I'm going to need to fix the date, the username, and the addresses. So the first thing I'm going to do, and uh, you know, just kind of to show this is I'm going to import this uh, into, um, you know, uh, in this. It, it, is, it is at least a CSV, you know, or maybe I had to run a process uh, where I actually had to go in and turn it into a CSV, you know, before I got to this point. At this point, you know, we, we are at least fortunate that we have something that looks like a CSV. Yeah, and uh, so we've got this, and so I just simply import it, you know, store it in a variable, and then boom, you can see that, um, now we come back out, you know, with um, with objects, and um, so we can look at this, and then each um, each field, you know, in this is actually a note property that gets added, you know, blah blah blah. You know, I can index into that. You know, I can do whatever I want to with it, and um, so this is actually the tool that I'm going to be able to use. You know, that's going to let me. Okay, I can work with individual records. You know, I can access individual fields from this. And so uh, this is what I'm going to use to, uh, to move forward. So then uh, the, after I do that, so then the next thing that I need to do is to actually start fixing this. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, because it's uh, fairly easy, is I'm going to um, 
fix the date. Okay, so um, so I read the I read the CSV, and I've already seen that I have a day, month, year field. Okay, so I'm going to walk through each object that comes uh, comes through my uh, from my CSV, uh, and so I use four each to do this, and uh, I'm going to create an object, and this is what you really, really, really want to do for this type of technique. Creating this object, yeah, is going to make everything else so much nicer. Okay, so uh, so I create a custom object, and this is simple. You know, I've seen so many different play pole that are still using the PowerShell 1.0 way of creating an object, you know, by popping stuff to add member. Dude. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you got a script that you wrote eight years ago and it still works, groovy. You know, more power to you. You know, um, but, you know, if you're writing new stuff, you know, you know, cast it to a custom object. You know, unless there's a reason for doing something different. Yeah, so this is the easy way, you know, PS custom object, create a hash table, you know, date is equal to, um, you know, then month, day, year. Now, you can make this any way that you want. I'm casting this to a date, time object. So if you go day, month, year, or year, day, month, or, you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, because I'm creating an object, I can manipulate this however I wish. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that I like to do, uh, and I use this on a regular basis, you know, it looks a little squirrely at first. Some people don't like it. You know, my preference is I do. Um, and this is you know, what I call parameter substitution over here. So I've got you know, date, time, then parentheses, and then I have a string. So quotation mark, quotation mark. And inside each of those, I have placeholders. You know, zero, one, two. Okay, you know, it's like Sesame Street, a one, a two, a three, okay. Uh, except it's binary, so, uh, or except it's computer, so it's a zero, a one, a two, all right. So um, then, you know, I format it however I wish. I just like to do a slash here. You know, once I cast it to a date time object, PowerShell is really smart. Anything that looks like a legitimate date, it'll handle for you. Uh, I was actually pretty much amazed, I mean, you know, so we do automatic uh, type conversion underneath the covers. You give it something where it's expecting a date time object, it'll convert it to a date time object. Um, and as long as you give it a fighting chance, you know, a dash, a period, you know, a wacky whack, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, I, and I actually spent like, you know, I'm easily amused. I spent like an hour one time just playing around with all the weird things I could possibly think of that might possibly could be construed as a date, you know, and. I think I wrote a blog article about it, <laughs> um, but um, so it, it is cool. I got a swag here. You know, if you don't like those, you can use a period, whatever. Uh, but yeah, you know, so this allows me then to t to take these pieces of a date, put them together in one easy line. Okay, and this could be a one-liner. You know, if you like one-liners, um, but you know, obviously not. So now I run this, and um, I look and I see. Okay, I've got things that look like dates now. Yeah, you know, and I go over my data, you know, to make sure that each particular line, you know, where we came through here, that it was able to come up with something that looks like a date from the data that was in my file. Now, I'm using a really small sample file to show you this, you know, uh, but, you know, this, this thing could easily have, you know, 25,000 lines, you know, and you're not going to be able to inspect. You're going to scroll through and look for outliers, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so that's why I break it into a pieces. So now I have code I know that will fix my date. So the next thing then, all right, so that was the easy one. I right, do. So now we're going to have to start to get a little bit more difficult and we're going to fix these names. Okay, so what did they think were names uh, when they were uh, putting this in? Well, we've seen that there was some stuff where they had all lowercase. Uh, we've seen some things, you know, where they had like spaces, you know, and, uh, and some other stuff. So, um, for consistency's sake, you know, in the old days, we would just use two upper and convert everything into uppercase. Okay, yeah, you know, that's fine. I mean, groovy, it works. Yeah, you know, but remember, you know, we're, the reason that we're transforming this data is because we want to be able to use it more easily in the future. And so if I just wimp out here and, and call to upper and set everything in the uppercase and throw it into Active Directory, then when they, uh, when they turn around and say, hey, you know, we need to create a softball team and you do your query, you know, and you pull out the thing, oh, well, we don't like these people's names all in uppercase. It looks like you're shouting at us and we need to be more polite around here, you know, you know, so whatever, you know. Um, 
or we have the team concept, you know. We're the team and you're the concept. You know, so, uh, but uh, anyway, so, uh, so we're going to fix this data. Yeah, and um, I was scrolling around one day looking at stuff, you know, and the other thing again, remember, this is a cultural specific thing here. Okay, so I found that there was a call get culture that returns a culture info object, you know, and I've written a lot of blog articles about that. And so then now we go call text info to title case. Groovy. Okay, so this is going to be, you know, uppercase, lowercase, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, and then what am I going to title case? Well, this name field. Okay, so that's the first thing is I need to make sure that the names are proper. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split them because we've seen that they were like, you know, first name, last name, at least I hope that's the way they were put in. You know, um, and so therefore, but there's no comments. Well, obviously I need to have a first name, last name field you know, so I can put these things in Active Directory or my other database in a more uh, reputable fashion. So I'm going to split them at the space. Okay, so we split it. Uh, and uh, then the next thing we're going to do is uh, you know, I'm going to trim it because after I split things, you know, sometimes there's more than one space, sometimes there's a space at the end. Trim with no parameters gets rid of leading and trailing spaces. Now, there's other trim things that will trim only leading or only trailing or so many leading, so many trailing, blah, 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 you know, but just trim like that. I mean, it's just like going in, sitting into the barbershop and just going to sleep. You know, you're going to get the default. You know, he's going to like cut everything off, you know. Um, so then I'm going to create a custom object. And uh, so now I have my last name and my first name. And um, so zero, one, and we're done with that part. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, the other thing that I would recommend, now I just use L name, F name, you know, because um, yeah, it's easier to type, but um, this can get confusing. When you start trying to match your fields up with given name, surname, you know, which are the, um, the attribute names that we have in Active Directory or whatever your other database may be, Okay, so I recommend that when you're using your uh, creating stuff here, you know, maybe massage. This came from the CSV, you know, but uh, so massage the data so that your things line up and, and your code is easier to read and easier to troubleshoot. You know, if you have to make a conversion in your mind that L name is given name, which is not even something that I use, you know, surname, I can kind of figure it out, you know, you know, uh, but. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, so just as a, as a case in point. So if, uh, if I find a comma, then I'm going to split it at the comma, trim everything's up, and then you know, parse it up. Uh, otherwise, if there is no comma, so this is the one where we had the space. Okay, you know, Betty space boop. Okay, so now I'm going to find a, um, a, a space, you know, split it, trim it, you know, and add them to my object. So uh, now, uh, now I just simply you know, run this script, you know, uh, take a look at my output, you know, did it do basically what I wanted it to do, you know, and, um, and again, if you've got a long, long, long text file, you know, give us a once and over, you know, because this is an iterative process, you know, you have to kind of go through this stuff, you know, multiple times, you know, and when you're doing this, you know, what we're doing right now is we're actually making rules for governing how we're going to clean up the data, how we're going to clean it up. Notice that in this case, I had an if or an else. Okay. Now, if we look at this and all of a sudden, you know, we find out that some of these had, you know, middle names and some of them didn't. Okay. So then we're going to have to add something to our rule. Um, if we find that, that some people's actual last name is actually their first name, you know, then at this point, we need to decide, is, was this a common error, you know, or uh, based upon somebody that really didn't know or understand, you know, what somebody's first name or last name was, or how the name might be reported, such as in Japan, it's quite often, you know, you know that the names are reversed. Yeah, and you won't even really know that next, unless you actually know Japanese and Japanese culture. Um, but, um, you know, so there could be a situation like that you know, where you're going to look, you know, where did this stuff come from and the address and see if the country code was Japan and then you flip the stuff around. 
Yeah. Uh, so you know, you need to d make that determination then. You know what your rules are actually going to be. You know, and is it worth my trouble to make a rule or to just manually edit the data? Sometimes I actually just go in and manually edit the file. You know, because it's not going to be worth my trouble to uh, to go to the to the bother of uh, creating a whole new data. All right, so um, so now we got the address. And uh, this again, you know, this, uh, like I said, you know, this is all, you know, it's data specific. So we, uh, we read, I read the file, I split it at the comma because there should be commas, you know, in the addresses. Um, yeah, and notice on line 12, um, so I find street. Well, how many different versions of street did I have in my data? Well, luckily I only had three. I had street, street, and street, ST, you know. So if I find this, then I'm going to replace it. Okay, um, and, and this replaces a street or street, and I'm replacing it with ST. I think that's the way I read that. Um, and then, you know, we, I've got the city. You know, now, notice that, I, uh, that there was one person that didn't want to bother spelling out do point. Okay, and uh, so if I find DWPT, then I'm going to replace that with the spelled out do point or else I'm just going to go on. Now, here I could put in a switch statement. So remember I mentioned Fort Mill. Yeah, so uh, that would be that number 12 uh, line up there. FT space M-I-L-L -L or, you know, or, you know, how, however many different ways that they come up with that. Charlotte's the same thing. You know, Charlotte, a lot of people actually misspell it. They put one T instead of two, you know, so that they don't embarrass themselves, they spell it CLT, I think, or CHLT, whatever. You know. uh, so you could have four or five different possible combinations you know, for that. You know, so you pick this up when you're looking through the data, you know, just kind of glancing at it to see. And then once you, you, this is the point now when we start running our rules and we look at it and see. You know, then if you start finding things that are showing up in your data, then you do some counts, use some right error, use try catch finally, you know, to uh, to print things out, you know, that see this and see how many exceptions that you're getting, you know, and um, and then based upon that, then you decide if you're going to go ahead and implement a new rule or not. Uh, South Carolina, you know, if I find that, then I'm changing South Carolina because that I've seen that in my data. I'm going to replace that with SC. Uh, the zip code. Now, right now, what I'm doing in my zip code is uh, if it's uh, greater than five, then I just print out error, okay? And so this is how I find out if I actually need a rule or not, you know, because it looked like there was a few cases, you know, where uh, whether uh, the zip code was too long, you know, maybe the key stuck or whatever. So then I create my object here. Streets, I am doing two upper. City, I'm doing two upper. You know, people don't get as carried away about that as, um, as names, but remember, and I'm also just doing this for illustration purposes. You know, if this is an issue, then go back in and do that, you know, culture, title case, blah, 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 blah thing, you know, that was in the earlier code. Um, you know, just, this is just showing you, you know, kind of different ways of approaching the, uh, the problem. Um, and so, again, this is just a pretty simple thing. I go through it, I add my rules, I look at stuff, you know, w when I find stuff, I make my corrections, and uh, then I create the custom object. So, um, run this script. And it looks pretty good, except, okay, wait. Now, notice that I do have a couple of errors. Uh, and um, in my original data, I didn't know that this, uh, I, I knew that the bottom one was an error because it was like, you know, nine characters long. But uh, one, of the, uh, one of the zip codes was actually six characters instead of five. I'm not that good at counting five or six characters, you know, particularly when I'm not feeling well. Um, so, uh, so I didn't know that that was there. So this is a good thing about having this error then, you know, that I just say, hey, you know, if it's bigger than this, you know, then we're going to generate an error. So now I've got a decision to make. And the decision to make is, do I want to kick these user accounts out, send them back to personnel, you know, which I could easily, you know, use, uh, use send mail, you know, and uh, I could actually implement this in my script that I collect the users that are bad, you know, and uh, put them in variable, blah, 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 you know, automatically send an email back to HR, these users cannot be corrected, you know, if I want to tell them why, 
you know, I can or not, you know, <laughs> do your job. You know? um, or, you know, I could, um, with a zip code, if I really, really wanted to be froggy, there is a zip web service. And I've actually written some scripting guy blog articles about using that web service. So I could, I could really and truly do a lookup using that web service and pick out the zip code that I need for myself. That would be cool. Depends on how, how good you are with friends you know, in HR. Or you can actually do what I implemented in my script. <laughs> um, it'll let your script work, <laughs> but you're not necessarily gonna win any friends. Um, so, um, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a sec. All right, so, so now um, I've gone through each of the pieces and, um, so, and this, this script here uh, was just simply, you know, I created regions. I love using, re, uh, using regions you know, in the PowerShell ISE. You know, uh, it's really simple. You know, pound sign region space, then the name of your region. And the nice and the, the reason I say I like this is because you know so this is my code for the name. Okay, well that's groovy. This is the code for the address. Okay, well hey that's groovy. You know, uh, this is the code that creates my custom object. Sweet. Okay, and and so now I can like look at this and read it really easily. Yeah, you know, and you know hone in and focus in you know on the part of the code you know that has problems. Uh, actually, and using the uh, the API. Um, and I've written some scripting guy articles about this. Yeah, you know, I can actually you know collapse all of the regions or expand all of the regions using the uh, PowerShell ISE API. You know, so if you're doing a presentation, for instance, you know you can automatically expand all of the regions. You know, uh, just like in my code, you know I'm I'm using the API and loading all my files because it gets confusing if I've got a dozen files open in the ISE. You're not sure if you click which one in the right order and all that junk. You know, so. Um, Plus, I could just add this in the comments into a speech API, and then I could just go sit down. <laughs> but uh, actually, I think uh, Jeffrey Hicks, uh, I think, wrote an article about that. It was actually kind of funny. You know, <laughs> you know a really automated you know, demo. <laughs> uh, but uh, OK, so, so this is, there's nothing new in this cut. Uh, all I did was put it together, added my regions, created my custom object, yeah, and um, and send it out. Notice that I have not, you know, uh, fixed uh, fixed the zip code yet. Um, and so I run this script, yeah, and um, and and now I take a look. You know, did I mess something up? Yeah, okay, this actually looks good. You know, okay, notice that we still got our errors over here, but you know, everything else is is fine. All right, so um, so now uh, it's ready to uh, to move to the next step, which is I'm going to throw it out to a CSV um, so that I can now uh, give this back to the people so that they can import it uh, back in um, to the appropriate database. And um, so, um, so here's my script. <clears throat> um, I just add a variable, you know, so hold my path for the groom data, you know, region, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, so remember, I was laughing, you know, my sinister laugh. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, how did I fix the zip code? Hey, I took the first five characters. <laughs> yeah, may or may not work, but yeah, it works for me. It didn't give me errors. <laughs> so uh, garbage in, garbage out, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is not the most uh, responsible approach. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's why I'm laughing. Yeah, um, I like to do jokes like this as a, just as a joke. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I would actually prefer you know that you use one of the other things. The, the coolest solution is to absolutely you know do the lookup using the web service and just correct it on the fly. Um, the the next coolest is to generate an email and send it back to HR and tell them to fix it. Yeah, um, but yeah if. But anyway, yeah, so then uh, the neat thing about this now is that uh, once I've got this nice properly formatted uh, custom object, it is absolutely no problem at all to throw it out to a CSV file, okay? And it'll automatically create the proper CSV for me from the object because that's what export CSV does. It exports a CSV file, okay? Now, the no type, uh, 
Now, it's important because we're in a loop, you know, that you use uh, dash append, you know, obviously. You know, otherwise you only get, you know, one user out of however many they gave you. Um, and two, it's important that you add this no type information. One of the things that PowerShell will do when we do export CSV is we will actually cre we create an object and we export it into a CSV file. And then when you import it, we use that type information to recreate the same type of object that you had when you exported it. That's nice. Um, and it gives you a lot of really good possibilities, such as like you take one big gulp from Active Directory, and now you can work on this stuff however long you need to before you write it back, you know, without, you know, and, and I've seen a ton of scripts where people do a new call to Active Directory, you know, often like ever for loop, you know, forever 1,500 or 15,000 users, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, um, that's not the best way. You, you do the big gulp, suck everything down, and then work on it offline, and then write it back. So there may be times when you want to do that, you know, but here we're not. You know, we just want that CSV format, you know, because we're going to give it, you know, back to the, to the DBAs or, you know, to the AD administrator, you know, and then he's going to, you know, bring it back in. Okay, um, so um, so we take this, yeah, you know, and um, we run it. Boom, yeah. You know, I didn't see any errors, you know, which obviously I wasn't expecting any. Um, and uh, so so now I can come over and uh, take a look, you know, at my um, at my data, and we can see that now that we got our last names. Notice that the uh, the names, the first name, we have a last name and first name field. They're properly capitalized. You know, we have a date time object. Now, if people look at this and say, oh man, you know, everything's like at midnight here, you know. Well, yeah, that's, that's there. But remember, it, this is a date time object. If you don't want a date time object, and by the way, both SQL Server and Active Directory know how to handle a date time object. I recommend that you leave a date time object because it's really easy to do date manipulation with a date time object. I can add days. So, you know, for instance, um, you know, I wrote a scripting guy article about, you know, providing, you know, notification to users that their password was going to expire and give them like two weeks head up. That was like, people like, oh, that's amazing. No, dude, it's like easy. You know, you know, um, you know add days 14, you know, or, or subtract it or whatever you do with the math. I can't do higher math right now. Um, and, and that gives it to you. So then we've got our address, you know, which is a, a, a street, a city, and a zip code. You know, and you know, notice that I, I did here, because of you know, my madness, I truncated the zip code you know, from the one that was too long that was obviously was messed up. You know, uh, but now I can now take this and easily import it. So this is basically was my presentation. And then something happened last week and um so um and because i haven't like stopped asking questions which wouldn't do you any good anyway because i can't hear um <laughs> so you have to get up with me like afterwards and look me right in the face if i'm not looking at you directly in the face i'm not going to be able to hear you honestly um but um so uh so last week you know, i got like this email from this guy and it's like you know in a panic you know and it's like you know i just got this yeah, email, you know, from HR, and I have to create, um, and, and it was like, you know, 2,500 user accounts, yeah, and, um, and they had sent it to him in a Word document, yeah, and so let me show you, uh, and I'm not showing you the Word document, yeah, but I'm going to show you a Word document, and this is what it looked like, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and literally, you know, and my first response, you know, is like, you know, what kind of a moron does this? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, stupid. Yeah, and then, then my next response was, you know, which would have been the response, you know, when I was a net admin, yeah, I would have sent it back to HR and tell them to fix it, you know, cut and paste this thing into an Excel spreadsheet, separate it out into first name, middle name, last name. I would have given them even a sample spreadsheet that had the column names that I needed and say, when you fix this, I will be glad to create these user accounts for you. 
And then the next sentence in the poor guy's email was, my boss said I can't send it back to HR. He told me, just fix it. Okay. Now, so this is like a real world scenario here. Yeah. And, um, and so I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so then I was thinking about my talk. I said, well, you know, let's, let's take this and see if we can fix this. Yeah. And uh, so the first thing that I did, because I really, really, really did not want to mess around with the, um, the word automation model. First of all, the word automation model is excruciatingly slow. Yeah, and it, it's, it's painful. You know, and I know it really well. I've been writing about it since VB script days, you know, and it hasn't changed, unfortunately, except getting slower. Um, and so, but, but anyway, you know, so, um, so I knew that I could do that, you know, and that was maybe part of my castration, you know, with this. But, you know, I thought, well, let me, let me paste this into, you know, like one of the best products that Microsoft ever created. And so, so I did, you know, Control A, Control C, yeah, and I came down here, and literally, this is one of the best products Microsoft ever made. You know, paste it in here, and luckily, you know, Notepad. I mean, it didn't fix everything. You know, but but look what it did. You know, so so now I can go through here and I can see this. Okay, so I, I now at least have a fighting chance. Yeah, and, and I am look, scrolling through this, and as I'm looking for this, I'm looking for some of the things that are going to be, cause me problems. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like Hung Fu Tony Ting. Um, yeah, and, and, and so, you know, and I'm looking at some of this other stuff here. You know, and you know, so we've got like first names and last names. You know, but also notice what I've got. I've got Unicode characters here. You know, and as my friends you know, from, from Europe and stuff will tell you, if I change this to an O, I've actually changed his name. <laughs> you know, that's a different character, you know, okay? So, yeah, I'm going to have to deal with the Unicode stuff. <laughs> so, I'm just kind of looking at this, you know, see what is my pain going to actually be? You know, um, yeah, and I keep going on through here, you know, and I, okay, well, I've got some that have like a, um, you know, uh, a middle initial, you know, um, and some other stuff. So I just kind of go, go on through here. I've got some dashes and some names. Dude, I'm going to have to deal with that somehow. Yeah, uh, and if I split that and make the first part the middle, the first name and the second part the middle name, she's probably not going to appreciate that either, you know. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm really going to have to do something with these uh, parentheses things, you know, um, and so forth and so on. Yeah, so I, I just kind of like scrolled through the data, taking a look at it to see what it's going to look like, you know, and, um, and everything else. So after I did that, then now I decided to go ahead and, um, and to, uh, to try to take a, st a stab at it. So I used the same scripts uh, that I had actually you know, written for the, uh, did for this presentation. And you're going to see that the code looks uh, amazingly similar. Okay, so um, I, re I use get content. Now this time I'm not using import CSV. I don't have a CSV yet. Okay, so I'm using get content and reading it in. Now the nice thing about get content you know, is that we automatically get an array of text. So that means I can iterate through this you know, one line at a time. You know, I don't have to like, you know, do the move, move next thing and move back and all that junk. You know, um, I automa it's automatically set up. So as soon as I read this, then um, I just use get content and I read it in. Yeah, you know, notice, hey, this line here, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't bother changing this. I mean, this is exactly the same line, cut and paste. I create my custom object. Now, one of the things that I did notice um, and we didn't see it when I was kind of looking through it when I was scrolling through the data, but I didn't see it. There are some w which was just A space J. Okay? Uh, and then there were some lines. Remember the lines? There was the A category, the B category, the C category. So what I did this is if the length is greater than two, so this automatically gets rid of that A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah through Z. Uh, as well as any blank lines and stuff. 
Okay, so this is really simple, you know, but it, it cleans up that part. Then I create my custom object, last name, first name, for each, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm looking for the space. Um, if I find the space, then I'm going to split, you know, at the space. So that'll get, because there was nothing between the first name and the middle name, although it did look like I had commas, you know, between the last names and the first and middle name. Um, so I split that, create my custom object. Um, for the middle name, I just use the first letter. Okay, so the M, the W, the A, the whatever, you know, for Maria. So the middle name actually becomes middle initial because that's what Active Directory asks for. Um, this is an unknown uh, fact that a lot of people don't realize. Middle initial in Active Directory, will act, um, if I remember correctly, actually holds six characters. You know, if you go into the, uh, to the AD schema tool, look up middle initial, I'm pretty sure it's, it's either five or six characters. Um, so it is, so that would be a solution, you know, if I needed, uh, if somebody had like three or four names or five names even, you know, I could pick, pick those out, you know, and break that up. I didn't want to make this more complicated than it needed to be. Um, so now the tricky part, so I've, I've read, I used Git content, I specified that it was Unicode, and when I export this to CSV, I must specify that it is Unicode, okay, because I want to keep that Unicode stuff. Um, no type information, blah, blah, blah. Now, otherwise, then um, I, I want to have that middle initial field, but I don't have anything for middle initials, and so what I made a decision that I'm going to input an empty character. Okay, so in Active Directory, there's multiple ways that a field can be empty. It can be empty with a space, it can be uninitialized, or the third one, so it's a three, three thing. Um, it's initialized, but kind of like null, you know. So it's not, there's not a blank, and it has been written to, but removed from, you know, or it's never been written to at all. You know, so pristine, blah, 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 whatever. So this actually changes it from being uninitialized. Okay, but it's not going to mess up my sorts or anything else. So that's why I'm putting an empty character, you know, for the middle initial field. Um, and I didn't want to write null because null really is something else altogether. Uh, so then I export it, type information, blah, 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 blah. So then um, after I've done this, then uh, this is actually going to uh, give me names out CSV. So it cleans up my data, you know, on a pretty good initial pass. Um, and then the, last, uh, then, then the last thing that I had to do um, was to, um, to create this, uh, these in the Active Directory. So, uh, so what I did in my test domain at home is you know, I created an OU. Uh, I, I wound up having to run this like a, uh, about a dozen times. You know, I found some stuff in the data that um, I, there were some duplicate names you know, in the data. You know, um, it wasn't that many that it was a major issue, but there were some duplicate names. So I didn't want to bother trying to do a Git unique or anything like that. Um, and then, uh, then I also noticed that uh, when I was creating uh, the names, so I broke the things up. Um, and I, I don't like the protective from accidental deletion because it's a pain. So I always turn that off, but that's just me. <laughs> um, then I create. I d decided to use splatting, you know. Uh, so, um, so this made it easy for me to create. This is so by using splatting, this makes it easy for me to create the rules to groom my data further. So that first script was just the initial pass to take it from a Word document, you know, and from what I had copied into Notepad, you know, to to clean it up, to break it up into fields, add column heads, and all this stuff, um, and then. Uh, then this now is where I started adding in some extra rules, you know. So I had to create the display name, you know, which is fine. You know, then my given name, and this is where the given name, initials, and surname would have been a bit easier. Um, notice that in my, tr my trial, I had figured out that the middle name, um, I was going to use one character, so I used the first character on that. And then I noticed that um, when I was creating this, there was like 22 names, you know, because I, I would... Ch I would clear the error object, you know, double error dot clear, then run my script, and then check the error object. So that's why I would know how many errors I was getting. Um, and um, I noticed that there were like 22 names that were just too long. 
Uh, it appears, and I don't know the exact number, but it appears that there's like a limit for the uh, username of somewhere around 30, 35 characters, something like that in Active Directory. And some of these were too long. So you would never do this in reality. This is just like truncating the zip code. Yeah, I decided to truncate the first names. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, so like I said, you'd never do this. You'd actually come up with a naming convention you know, uh, that you would use. You know, um, and actually, I would, do, I would implement my naming convention as a separate function you know, um, and put this whole thing like in a module you know, if there's something you're going to do on a regular basis. Uh, the other thing that you would need to do uh, is test you know, because uh, we found you know, here at like Microsoft, you know, we have, I don't know, 150,000 people in AD or something like that. But, you know, uh, we found, you know, that with our naming convention, there are duplicates. You know, so that's how we, and the way we handle it is we like, you know, add additional letters, you know, from like the last name or something. Yeah. You, know, um, you may decide that you want your, your usernames, you know, to be more like Sam account names, you know, um, and so you can do that if you wish. You know, um, so uh, so I said uh, I use try catch finally in here, um, and so when I was running this, uh, every time that I would run into an error, you know, it would would kick out the cat in the catch loop, you know, um, that I had the error, you know, and so then I would look at it, and then I'd go in and go back in, look, take a look at my data, you know, see what I need to do, what, do I need to modify my rule, or am I going to change it manually? Yeah, and um, and then kept doing that until it was finally claimed. Okay, so I uh, said so this is kind of like you know real world kind of thing, you know, um, you know, uh, but it's exactly you know the same techniques, you know, and um, these um, last couple scripts, you know, they're actually you know on my scripting up blog, you know, from over the weekend, and I would ask for questions, but it wouldn't do any good, and I'm out of time anyway. So um, if you do have questions, please catch me. Yeah. Push the button. Oh, push the button. Okay. Is that it?